expand our imagination. Welcome to Washington Unplugged. I'm Kaylee Hartung, and I'm joined today by contributing editor of the Loop21.com, Kelly Goff, a regular on this webcast. But today we are not talking politics. We are talking about Kelly's new book, The GQ Candidate. Kelly, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. So tell us quickly about the book. So the book is my first foray into fiction. It's uh, my very first novel, but second book. And it's about what happens to a group of friends when one of them decides to run for president. And by sheer coincidence, from the depths of my imagination, the candidate happens to be African American, charismatic, handsome, black, with a multiracial family. I know this doesn't sound familiar at all. Not at all. <laughs> and his name is Luke, Governor Luke Cooper. Could you have written this book before 2008? I'm so glad you asked that. The answer, I think, is no. <laughs> and it's interesting because people always say, well, obviously, this book was inspired by President Barack Obama. And I say, well, the biggest contribution that President Barack Obama's life story made to this book is making this book possible. Because you know, my agent and I have both said that five years ago, had we walked into any major publisher's office and pitched this book, we would have been laughed out of the office. Because if we'd said, this book's about a campaign for president, oh, by the way, the, one of the leading contenders is actually black, they would have started laughing probably, right? And so thanks to him, it's not a laughing matter anymore. <laughs> now, why did you choose to go into fiction? I mean, you, you have a full-time job as a political commentator. Thank we you. see you, you know, on MSNBC almost nightly. And when did you have the time and why did you decide to do it? Um, well, I kind of feel like I didn't have the time <laughs> and I kind of feel like the reason I did it is because I'm crazy. But uh, no, it, what ended up happening is, you know, I did my first book, Party Crashing, back in 2008, which was about younger voters and the post-civil rights generation and uh, the 2008 election. And, you know, I had, I had to, my, my agent was on me to do a second book, as agents are wont to do. Mm -hmm. And I had a couple of nonfiction ideas, but none that I was really that gung-ho about. And finally I said to her, look, I know this sounds a little wacky, but I have this idea for a novel about what happens to a group of friends when one of them decides to run for president. And she be basically said, love it, you have to do it, start writing, and don't tell a soul. <laughs> so you just got started, and then here you are. Yeah. Here I am, but I have to tell you, I actually found writing this book tougher than writing my first one. And my first one, I was in interviewing people like Colin Powell and um, Al Sharpton and, and all sorts of elected officials and grand poobahs, as I like to call them. And I was doing polling research, and yet I still found the challenge of writing fiction tougher. I mean, it just really, I call doing nonfiction the logistical Olympics, and this felt like the creative Olympics, because there are no facts, figures, and poll numbers to fall back on you. It's just you, your ideas, the story, the characters. And so it was challenging. I actually wrote a blog post saying that I found this tougher than jumping out of a, an airplane to go skydiving, which I've also <laughs> done. I found this actually scarier at some moments. So that's incredible. So, you know, some of the headlines we see today are better than anything the best writers right. could come up with. What kind of challenge was that for you? I mean, you have political scandal, all sorts of, of very intricate plot lines in here. How tough was that for you to come up with those storylines? Well, it is funny because there are certainly things in the book that I remember I would say to my editor or to my agent, you know. I want this on the record that the first draft was finished before this story came out. <laughs> I want this on the record that I did not grab this from the headlines. And one quick example is the New York Times did a really interesting article about the Obama's closest circle of friends and how the presidential campaign changed their lives and relationships. And I was already working on the book and, you know, well into it before this article came out. And I was like, everyone's going to think I got this idea from there. And then, you know, there are a couple of, of stories. I mean, I remember there was uh, the story last year sometime about how um, one of the president's friends uh, got into some legal trouble apparently with a lady of the evening or that's the allegation and um, you know I was already working on the book and there are a couple of scandals that pop up in the book but that actually speaks to what I want to be one of the main takeaways conversational takeaways for the book which is ultimately asking us um, is it fair what we ask people to sacrifice in the name of public service is it fair to ask someone's spouse, their children, their closest friends to relinquish their privacy, their right to privacy in the name of someone they know having the right to run for the highest office uh, in the land. And I don't know the answer to that, but I think it's a conversation we need to have, especially when you have candidates like Mitch Daniels, who for, from everything I've heard is a very well qualified Republican yeah, cool. candidate deciding not to run for office because he feared the scrutiny his wife and children would face. And so that's really kind of what the book is about and, and the heart of the book. Well, I can't let you leave without asking a few questions about the news of the day. How do you see the debt negotiations working out? 
You know, I feel like it's deja vu all over again, right back in the, the Clinton era in terms of um, you have kind of these two sides in this, this I hate saying this, but it's like a public relations battle, you know? I mean, here we have a very serious issue. And at the end of the day, I think it's going to be about who's winning the opinion war. And all the poll numbers seem to show that, you know, the American public, as much as they, they, they want our country to be on the right track financially, to be fiscally responsible, that's one of the words that constantly comes up in polls, they also are not holding President Obama to blame for a lot of these economic woes. Um, people still like him. Uh, his his likability numbers keep holding up, even throughout all of these negotiations, which I think puts the GOP in a tough spot and gives him a bit of leverage. Mm -hmm. And another presidential cycle is almost upon us. Yes. <laughs> the GOP field is really heating up. Yes. Who are your front runners? I, you know, I have to say this, and I, I'm probably going to get in trouble here, and, you know, I, I know people on his campaign, they're probably like, please stop helping, you're going to cost him votes for saying this. I like Mitt Romney. I think, you know, he seems like a, 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 a competent person with a very strong business background, um, and I feel like in almost any other elec election, he would be the front runner. I actually think Michelle Bachman has a very strong chance in Iowa. I think that people who laugh her off do so at their detriment. I think she has a strong shot in Iowa. I think she has a strong shot in South Carolina. I think she's a very formidable contender. And look, I've written about him. I think Herman Cain is very interesting. I think he could be a wild card and not necessarily win the whole thing, but I think he can siphon off enough votes from some of the other people who theoretically should have a better chance, people like Tim Pawlenty. So, I, look, I think that if Mitt Romney were, makes, makes this the general election, I think he's a very formidable opponent for the president. The question is whether or not he can actually get through a GOP primary. Isn't that the truth? Kelly Goff, the book is The GQ Candidate. It is on bookshelves now. Thank you so much, Kelly. Thanks so much for having me. This was fun. Great. We're done. Perfect. Thank you. If we don't expand our imagination, Okay. 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 Okay.